Hey everyone, happy Monday, hope you're doing okay. The discipleship year will know this, but I love the theme of story. And so we're going to journey through a story together now. This is the story of a woman from a place called Shunem, which we read about in 2 Kings chapter 4. And so I'm going to read it now. We'll journey through it together, starting at verse 8. One day Elisha went to Shunem, where a wealthy woman lived, who urged him to eat some food. So whenever he passed that way, he would turn in there to eat food. And she said to her husband, Behold, now I know this is a holy man of God who is continually passing our way. Let us make a small room on the roof with walls and put there for him a bed, a table, a chair and a lamp, the whole Ikea set up, so that whenever he comes to us, he can go in there. Isn't that a lovely story? Well, of course, that's just a scene, part of a much bigger story. And so it goes on. Elisha, he is really humbled by this woman's generosity and he wants to repay her. So he calls on his servant, Gehazi, to call the lady and ask what he can do for her. And Gehazi says, well, this lady has no child. Her husband is old. And so Elisha says to her, about this time next year, you will hold a son in your arms. And of course, naturally, the lady, she doubts and she she actually says to Elisha, don't deceive me because, you know, we don't see the scenes where that hasn't happened for her. And so she she essentially just kind of dismisses it. But we read on that the lady becomes pregnant and she gives birth to a son. And we read just as Elisha had told her. But even that's not the whole story because the boy grows up and he's out playing in the field and one day he gets a really bad headache. He goes to his dad, dad sends him to his mum and sadly he dies around noontime in his mum's arms. And this is just another scene in this story. The woman then puts the boy, his, his body, in Elisha's room and then she travels on a donkey to Elisha and finds him at Mount Carmel. And she confronts Elisha and she says, why did you do this? I said, don't deceive me. And now look what's happened. And so she actually makes Elisha come back with her. So Elisha comes back and he lies with the boy on top of the boy and the boy sneezes seven times and comes back to life. It's a little bit odd. You can go and read it yourself. It's actually a really detailed story. So there's a lot more to that. But, but the boy comes back to life. But even that's not the end of the story. We read in chapter 8 that there's a famine in the land for seven years. And Elisha advises the lady to leave the land, leave her property with her family. And so she goes and she stays in Philistine. And while she's there, over seven years of the famine, she loses her land and her property. And then we read this in chapter 8. At the end of the seven years, she came back from the land of the Philistines and went to appeal to the king for her house and land. The king was talking to Gehazi, the servant of Elisha that we just heard about, and had said, tell me about all the great things Elisha has done. And we read that just as Gehazi was telling the king how Elisha had restored the dead to life, the woman whose son Elisha had brought back to life came to appeal to the king for her house and land. It's like a movie scene. I'm literally reading this verbatim from the text. And Gehazi said, this is the woman, my lord and king, and this is her son whom Elisha restored to life. And the king asked the woman about it and she told him. Then he assigned an official to her case and said to him, give back everything that belonged to her including all the income from her land from the day she left the country until now. Isn't that just an amazing story? And what I love is that what she did in chapter four, this gesture of generosity for Elisha and his servant was waiting for her full circle in chapter eight. Because when her story met God's story, it made history or his story. And so when we read that story, we ask ourselves the question, is there trial and tragedy along the way? Well, yes. But if the son hadn't died, would the story even exist? The fact that she lost the baby made the story worth telling, but the fact that she couldn't have the baby made it miraculous. And so I love that when we read this story, we see that God is working all things together. 
And for us, we might not know the whole story of our life right now, but it's still being told. Sometimes we see just a scene and we can get stuck there, but there's more to the story. And of course, in life, there are many scenes that we would have chosen to skip, myself included, but you can't judge the story by the scene. At Christmas, we celebrate Jesus coming to be with us uh, in the manger. Uh, but obviously, that's just a scene. It's not the story. Jesus grows with wisdom and stature and favour with God. Uh, he's the miracle worker that we know him to be. And at Easter, we celebrate his resurrection. But you can't have a resurrection without a crucifixion. These are just scenes, but together they make the story, just like our lives. And God gives you a story so that you have a story to tell. You might have heard it, that your mess is your message, your test is your testimony. But God gives you a story so that you have a story to tell to others who need to hear the hope of Jesus. And so in this time, we may have skipped a few scenes. Actually, maybe some of us would have chosen to skip the whole thing. Covid, the coronavirus, the current debates and discussions that we're having around racism at the moment, we may have chosen to skip the whole scene, but God has been at work in it. And it's when we apply that perspective that things change. We know that God is working all things together as the grand weaver and the great author. And, and actually, maybe out of this time, we'll even see revival as the church. But when the scenes come together and God's light shines through, revealing hope that we can have in Jesus. Even though we have trouble, he says, take heart because he's overcome the world. When we put the scenes together and we see the story that God is writing, your story becomes part of his story. And I think next week I'll share some of what God's been doing, working together in me and in my story. So until then, have a great Monday and I will see you then. God bless.